The 2022 Honda Civic is our best car of the year, and this Civic Si is gonna show us why. We drive all sorts of different stuff here at Daily Motor. Everything from Wrangler 392s, GLS 63s, motorcycles, jet skis probably at some point. We really try to drive it all. But what really comes down to what makes a good car for us is three things. One, how does it make us feel from behind the wheel? Do we enjoy driving it? Do we get excited to drive it? Do we have a good time? Two, how well does it achieve its purpose? If it's a sedan like this that's meant to be affordable, how, how affordable is it? How much do you get for that price point? If it's an off-roader, how well does it off-road? If it's a sports car, how fast does it go? And the other thing is how good is it to own? If we had to be stuck with this car for three years, five years, 10 years, how is it gonna hold up over that time continuing to fulfill its mission and be a desirable vehicle? So when it came down to it, and we went through our bracket process and narrowed down to four cars. We had a BMW X5, the Porsche 718, the Honda Civic, and the Mazda CX-5. Four cars that are great fun to drive, achieve their mission well, and we would be happy to own any of them. But when it came down to the final two, the BMW X5 and the Honda Civic, we talked about it a lot, and we decided that the Civic provided the best in all of those metrics. It's a great car to drive, whether you've got the two liter naturally aspirated, the 1.5 turbo, something like this SI, and I'm sure the Type R will be even better to drive. We'd all be happy to put one in our driveway. It achieves its mission really, really well, starting in the low $20,000 range, getting up to just over 30 for the more well-equipped options. It's a really great price, and it provides a lot of value for that. And it'd be a car that we'd have no problem owning for a really long time, both from a desirability standpoint and from maintenance costs, ownership costs. It's good all across the board. So I know we're not the only ones who have given the Civic Car of the Year. In fact, just today we found out it's the North American Car of the Year by Nactoy. So we're not unique in this, but it doesn't take away from how much the Civic deserves all of these awards. So let's go take a look at this example, the 2022 Honda Civic Si, and talk about what makes the Civic lineup just that special. If you want to see more on the Civic in general, we've got videos for the sedan, the hatchback, the SI. I'll put all the links to those in the description so you can check out sound systems, fuel economy, anything you'd want to see. So here we are in the Honda Civic. It is freezing today, so we are it is freezing. We yes. want to say hello to Christopher, hello. who's holding the camera. I'm here. If any of you do not know, Christopher has been around shooting videos for a while now, so check out some of his DM test drives. Yeah. A little dark in here because of the sun, our good friend the sun, but Checking out the interior just real briefly, I mean, it's, it kind of starts the whole idea of the Civic. This, this combination of functional and straightforward, easy to use, but also everything you need. You've got everything from petty things to having handles and extendable sun visors oh, to... Extend as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah unlike the Taos. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But then things like automatic climate control and, and two USB ports, just a lot of car that makes sense, both from a, from a desirability standpoint and from a usability standpoint. Yeah. And nice materials, too. Yeah, absolutely. Even for beyond this car's price point, yeah, I listen, would say listen nice to materials. This. Super quality clicking. Everything's yeah. very solid. Yeah. It's very well built. It's ASMR. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. But yeah. Everything, and this just works for me. I yes. love the design of the dash. I agree. It's fantastic. All three Civic models deserve Car of the Year, whether it's the sedan, the hatch, or this SI. We just so happen to have the SI now, but it's kind of our chance to discuss the Civic lineup as a whole. Chris and I were fortunate enough to go to a studio preview of the very first Civic sedan and Civic hatch. And it was, it was cool. I, I, there was a little bit of controversy about the styling. Some people think that the 11th generation, this current one, is not quite as special looking as, as the 10th gen. And I see that. I, I, can, I can agree. Yeah, but I, I think, I think it's, a, it's a very proper evolution. I think that they did all the things right to fit the current market and what buyers actually want. A lot of the negative things I heard about the last gen is that it was just too childish and too like too many lines like yep. it, there was just so much going on especially with the type r i agree type r was like a total nerd fest yeah so 
I'm really, really looking forward to seeing the new Type R in this in this uh, generation. We have seen some sneak peeks of it, but yeah, and and having this more mature, more clean look to this car does allow Honda to go a little bit crazier with this SI and the Type R without it going overboard like the 10th generation. So I am looking forward as well to the to the 10th gen or the 11th gen Type R. And I also think it speaks to the Civic's place in its class and its segment now because for the previous gen, for the last five years or so, the Golf was the surprisingly good car. The seventh generation Golf was, even in base form, 1.4, 1.5 liter, a very, very good and fun to drive and mature car. The Civic was a little more of the boy racer one. And I think the Golf was ultimately the better of that car, whether it was GTI, Golf R, or base Golf. Now, the GTI has gotten too boring and too grown up, almost geriatric and, and very digital and, and not an engaging car. And you can't even get a normal Golf anymore. I mean, the, the Golf That's is right. not sold here in the United States. Yeah, just the GTI and the R. Right, so now I think the Civic is stepping up, and some of this might just be coincidence, but the Civic is stepping up to be the Golf replacement. And then you've got the Hyundai Elantra, which is kind of stepping up to be the 10th gen Civic replacement. <laughs> Very strong angled lines, kind of an over the top caricature design, um, especially once you get into like the Veloster N, which is super loud, poppy, crackly, like you, you better be wearing a flat brim hat sort of car. <laughs> but it, it all just kind of fits in into the natural ecosystem of if you do want more of that image, you get the Hyundai. And if you want the best of all the worlds, you get the Honda, you really do. Some of the content that you get in these cars, we're, obviously we're driving the SI, but even in the normal Civics, you finally can get a decent sound system. That was huge for Honda because as you know, here at Daily Motor, we really care about sound systems, but Hondas have always let us down. I've always known if we're gonna be taking a Honda on a road trip, it's gonna have garbage sound. It's really been sad. So when I heard that Honda was partnering with Bose for this, oops, this 11th gen Civic sound system, I was really excited and I'm not disappointed. I'm really not. It's not an S tier sound system by any means, but it's very, very strong. And again, when you consider the price point, it's really cool that Honda decided to step up. Oh, we're getting mouthed, sent to Gapplebee's by uh, Mr. RT Challenger there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it gives us an excuse to show off the Bose speakers. Yes. Or tweeters, call. sorry. Mm -hmm. Tweeters. Yes. So you're getting good content. You're getting that Bose audio system. If you step up to one of the higher trims, you're getting a, a fun to car, <laughs> fun to car drive. You're getting a fun to drive car. You're getting a really affordable price. You're getting good powertrains, very tried and true. These are the same motors that came through from the previous car. If you had anything to criticize the new Civic on, I think that would be the one thing, is just that we're not really seeing anything new and exciting with powertrains. But I think that's kind of speaking to the internal combustion market at this point. Brands aren't putting a whole bunch of money into new gasoline powertrains, whether you like it or not. A lot of their R&D is going toward electrified powertrains. So I kind of, I respect Honda for just saying, hey, these engines were pretty good already. Let's just send them on through. And yeah, you get a little bit more power here or there or whatnot, but essentially they're the same, the two liter and the 1.5 liter. Look is that, at the, is that you? No, that's active rev match. Oh. Yeah, active rev match in a car that costs $27,000. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's quick. Yeah, it is. It's no rocket ship, but at the same time, we're doing 80 miles per hour now, and it just kind of gets up to speed. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the differential's really good. We're only on all-season tires, but there's a good amount of grip in this car. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what other car, and I'm sure maybe there's something out there, but what other car do you get active rev matching? It feels like a proper active rev, it's rev really match. really good. Too. Excuse me, yeah. The one thing is, have you driven this car in sport mode yet? No, I've driven it for like 30 seconds around the block. It does not sound fantastic. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's like very, very traditionally Honda. Wow! You like the Casper the Ghost oh. in the speakers? <laughs> Ooh. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad that I kind of like that? No, you're allowed <laughs> to like it. Another thing I like is Honda sort of addressing issues from previous gen cars. The shifter 
has a nice little bit of leather right around. Feel that leather, Chris. I mean, that's like wow. legit, like good leather. Yeah. And because it's not all 100% um, steel, stainless steel, you don't burn your hand in the summer and you don't freeze your hand in the winter. You can grab, yeah. grab the leather. That's uh, that's a good point. My mm -hmm. manual IS300 has a solid metal ball shifter and my girlfriend knitted me a little hat for it. So when I drive it in the summer or winter in extreme hot or cold, I don't burn or freeze my hand. You have a ball, uh, a, a, a ball hat? Yeah. <laughs> Chef do. ball hat? We just did the highway fuel economy test on this car. 39 miles per gallon we achieved. And it's it's a little loud in here for your average car, but again, for the price point, perfectly good highway cruiser. And then look at this. You turn on, actually you don't even need to turn on cruise. You can just have the active lane keeping on. And once we get this little green confirmation, look at that. This isn't a $27,000 car. I don't even need a steer anymore. <laughs> it's great. It's yelling at you. It's yelling at you, but you hear how it's not obnoxiously yelling at me. It's just a very subtle little thing that I can go, Bloop. Yeah, we're good. Get rid of it, yeah. Yeah. Very impressive. And again, I really respect Honda for yeah. putting that sort of technology in this car. We just had a $77,000 Cadillac that did not have adaptive cruise control, and it was a very rudimentary active lane keeping. <laughs> and the ride is so good. I mean, it's it's firm, but it's not crashy. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yep. <laughs> It's an accessible car, and that is what makes the 11th generation Civic so good, is the fact that it's accessible to so many people, whether you're a sporty type driver, you want to drive like a tool like that, or you want to just have a nice commuter, yeah. get yourself a Civic EX or something, and it's no surprise that a Civic is going to be a sensible, reliable car, but it's the fact that it's also fun to drive. It's the fact that you also get glass leading technology and decent looks and just what more, what more do you really need why why are people ponying up for very very expensive cars these days you kind of get what you need for 30 grand yeah. and a civic do yeah. it like your point about the base model 3 series earlier right yeah yeah you're getting as much room in here as a 3 series you can get a manual transmission can you still get a manual transmission? You can't. No, no only series. in an M3. Right. Yeah. So this is like the new 3 Series, which is kind of what people have said about the Accord for a long time. Is like you can get yourself a V6 manual Accord, and that's like the everyman's 3 Series. Right. I mean, you do. You are still dealing with front-wheel drive. You can't get past that. But at this price point, what do you expect? Right. I mean, this pavement up here is really broken. And for a sporty car like this, to be taken at this well is it's just really impressive. Do we have any complaints about the, the 11th Gen Civic in general? No, and I was just thinking about that, how when we had just the normal sedan with a CVT, I didn't even have any complaints about that. It right. was a fine CVT. And if anyone's seen your Outback review, you have oh certain things to say about the <laughs> CVT. Yeah, I've upset the Vibrams enthusiasts in you, the comments. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the CVT in the normal car is really fine. And you know Honda's not gonna put out something that's gonna have reliability issues. So everyone in the comments who likes to be, oh, I'll never own something with a CVT. Why'd they put a CVT in it? It's Honda, guys, calm down. It's gonna be okay. It'll be fine. Right, we're not talking about Nissan here. Yeah, I don't think I had any complaints because the CVT was fine. I loved the, the lane keep, the steering assist, whatever you want to call it. I love the infotainment screen. I love going around roundabouts in it. Oh yeah. God, and even just on all seasons. Yeah, imagine this on like a proper set of tires. Yeah. Watch out for Santa. Yeah, it's kind of funny. They gave us the HPT package, which would give us summer tires from the factory, but then they put all seasons back on it because it's winter. Yeah. 
You get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto in here, which is pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. I don't have it enabled right now. Yeah. Because it's just Go a nice Go, screen. Yeah, it's a good screen, nice controls. Honda re-added a good volume knob, nice clicks. Yeah, a little bit yeah. volume knob. Did Honda get rid of volume knobs for it? Yeah, the Ridgeline. Well, the 10th Gen Civic didn't have a volume knob until they had, they had to re-add it because of all their backlash. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah there volume was, knobs are important. They really are. Volume knobs are very important. As much of like a cliche journalist thing that is, it is an important feature. Oh, got a nice middle finger back there. Glad, uh, glad you were upset by that, Mr. Truck. You, you offended his masculinity. I sure oh, did. Oh, he gave you another one. Oh, double. Cool. <laughs> you weren't even close to him. <laughs> he had the American flag seat covers in there. Great. <laughs> no, the, the, the 11th Gen Civic, is, it's just impressive. It really is. I it mean, is. there's there's... Honda did a great job. They knew what they needed to do with a car and a nameplate like the Civic, and they did everything they needed to. It's not going to be everyone's favorite car, but I don't yeah. think any car is. So, what more can we say? I wouldn't change anything. Right. Yeah, they did a great job. I would happily buy one. So would I. Yeah. 100%. Especially after hearing your fuel economy result. Right. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yep. I would probably get, I was looking at it earlier today, I'd probably get... A hatch sport touring, which would get me the Bose. You could get a manual okay. with the 180 horse, 1.5 liter, and that would be that'd be my car. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So congratulations to all the finalists: the X5, the 718 Boxster, and Cayman. The Mazda CX-5 again, still yeah. a great car. Lovely car. Yep, but Honda Civic is the best for 2021. It's our car of the year. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the 2020 car of the year, the Lexus LC500. Yeah. Yep. So an, a very different, <laughs> but also a very great car. And thank you all so much for watching. As always, looking forward to seeing what comes next year. It might be the Ford Maverick because Maverick was just a little bit too late yep. to make it into the last year's award show, but or the or a Blackwing. Right, yeah, the Blackwing was quite good yep. as well. Yep. So, and, and we've got so many fun electric cars coming down the pike for the next year. So, really looking forward to what 2022 has to bring us. And until then, we're Chris and Charlie with Daily Motor. And as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.